Welcome to Golden Software's demonstration video for Digger 5, Part 5. In this demonstration, I will be covering the topic of digitizing objects and modifying the project limits and scale. Digitizing is the process of transferring paper document information, image information, or other data to your computer by creating points, lines, and areas that are spatially related and have real-world coordinates. For this example, I will use the file, import command to import the sample image tutorialmap.jpg. Points are used to represent point locations, like a well location, a sample location, or if you just need to find the specific coordinates for a point on a map or graph. To digitize a point, go to Draw, Symbol, or click on the Draw Symbol icon in the toolbar. You then have the option to specify some of the properties in the Property Manager. You can change this information now, or go straight to digitizing. In this example, I will change the information in the Property Manager before digitizing. In the Digitize Data Attributes section, you can enter up to four IDs for your point. This can be something like a well name, a field location, etc. You can enter the data attributes for a point directly after digitizing the point, or later in either the Property Manager or the Data Manager. If you want to enter the information after digitizing the point, select the option to Enter Data After Creation. If you want the attribute information to be automatically incremented, to have a primary ID of 1 through 7, you can check the Auto Increment checkbox and then you will need to fill in the information below for the increment value. If you are going to create many points and would like to digitize them one right after the other, check the Create Several checkbox. Check the Auto Increment option. Start with the value of 1.0, and then have an ending increment value of 7.0. I will leave the increment value set to 1.0, but will set the ID prefix to MW hyphen. I will also clear the ID suffix field. In the Symbol Properties section, you can set the symbol, color, and size of the points that you will create. I will choose a solid diamond shape and change the color from blue to red. I will also change the size from 0 0.05 inches to 0.15 inches. The Label Properties section allows you to modify the point labels. Click where it says to click here to modify the label, to open the Label Position Editor dialog. You can label the points with one of the four IDs. Since we created a primary ID, I will select the Primary ID label and click Add. You can set the font properties and the label position for each of the points. When you have set the properties that you want, Click OK. Move the cursor over the plot window and the cursor will turn into a crosshair. Click on the screen or tablet where you want the symbol to be located. In this case, digitize all of the monitoring well locations labeled MW1 to MW7. Click the Escape key when you are finished adding symbols. Once the symbols are created, you can use the Property Manager to change the display properties of the digitized points. In the Data Manager, Hold the Control or the Shift key on the keyboard to select each of the digitized points. With the points selected, you can change the data attributes, symbol properties, and label properties for the digitized points. Enter Example into the Secondary Data Attribute field. If I scroll down in the Property Manager, I can see the Symbol Properties section. The Symbol Properties section will allow you to set the symbol, fill color, line color, and size for the symbol. I will change the symbol from a red diamond to a blue cross. I will also increase the size from 0.2 inches to 0.3 inches. The Label Properties section allows you to modify the point labels. Click where it says, click here to modify the labels. This will open up the Label Position Editor dialog. In the Label Properties dialog, you can specify the attribute field that will be used for the point label. I will select Primary from the drop-down menu and click the Add button. I can set the font properties for the label by clicking the Font button. In the Label Position section, you can set the position of the label relative to the point. I will click on the little arrow above the central point, so that the label is placed directly above the digitized point. On the right, you can see a preview of the label position. When you have set the properties you want, click OK to save the settings. You will see the changes to the symbol formatting immediately in the plot window. Polylines are used to represent lines, such as road contours or political boundaries. To digitize lines, use the Draw Polyline command, or click the Draw Polyline icon on the toolbar. You can define the polyline properties in the Property Manager once this command has been selected. You can do this prior to digitizing a polyline, or after you have digitized your polylines. For example, 
I will set the polyline properties in the property manager before I start digitizing. The digitize data attributes section is the same as if you are digitizing points. In the increment settings section, I will check the box next to create several so that I can digitize multiple polylines, one right after the other. Scroll down and you have the option to set the line properties and label properties for the line. The line properties is where you specify the line's style, color, width, and any start or end styles, such as arrowheads. Click in the Label Property section to label the polyline with one of the four IDs. I did not create any ID information, so I will not click there. Once you have set the polyline properties you would like to use, move the cursor over to the plot window. The cursor will change to a crosshair. You can digitize a polyline in one of two ways. First, you can click on each point that makes up the polyline, but this does not produce a very smooth line. Second, you can hold the mouse button down and trace the polyline with the left button being held down. This is called stream mode digitizing and does produce a very smooth polyline. Double click to end digitizing the polyline. For the sake of speed, I will not be digitizing these lines very accurately. Once all of the polylines are digitized, I will hit the escape key to end digitizing mode. If after a polyline is created, you want to edit any of its properties, you can select the polyline in the data manager and change the properties for the selected polyline in the property manager. For example, I will change the color of the selected polyline from blue to orange, and I will change the width to 0.05 inches. Polygons are used to represent an enclosed area, such as a lake or a building. A polygon is similar to a polyline in Digger, except that the first and last vertices occupy the exact same X and Y position. To digitize a polygon, go to Draw, Polygon, or click on the Draw Polygon icon on the toolbar. You can specify the properties of the polygon you will digitize in the Property Manager. You can change the information now, or you can go straight to digitizing. In this example, I will change the properties now, and then digitize the polygon. The Digitize Data Attributes section is the same when digitizing polygons as they are when digitizing polylines. In the Increment Settings section, I will uncheck Create Several, since I will only be digitizing one polygon. Scroll down and you can see the Line Properties, Fill Properties, and Label Properties sections. The Line Properties section is where you will specify the line's style, color, and width for your polygon. The Fill Properties section is where you will specify the fill pattern for the area inside your polygon. You can choose from many different fill patterns and foreground and background colors. I will choose a cross-hatch fill pattern and I will choose a foreground color of blue. When you have set the properties that you want, move the cursor over the plot window and it will turn into a crosshair. You can digitize a polygon in the same two ways as digitizing a polyline, by clicking individual points or by holding down the left mouse button and tracing the polygon boundary. Double click to end the polygon. If after the polygon is created, you want to change any of its properties, all you have to do is select the polygon in the data manager and change the properties in the property manager. To customize your project, you can change the project limits and scale. Go to Map, Project Limits. Here you can specify the X and Y axis minimum and axis maximum values. These determine the extents of your project space. If the project has a projection assigned to it, it would have to use the appropriate units for the projection. The particular project is not projected, so that the units are whatever I set my calibration units to. I can also choose to set the limits based on the project extents. This will get rid of any extra white space around my objects. In this dialog box, I can also set the X and Y scaling values or length values. These values will determine the physical size of the project space and will come in handy when you export or print the object. Choosing the Set Proportional XY Scaling option forces the X and Y dimensions to be scaled equally. Click OK and the project limits and scale are modified. This concludes my demonstration video of digitizing and modifying the project limits and scale. As always, if you have any questions, please contact Golden Software.